Ripple, Cardano, Filecoin, Sequentia, Harmony One, and a few other heavy hitters in the world of blockchain. We at Mutual Knowledge Systems have been working on many different projects, and today we are introducing our own thing, Sky Protocol, with the lead architect, François René Rideau Faré, president and chief scientist of Moon, and also the lead architect on the Sky Protocol project. Hi, Faré. Hello, Gauthier. So we're not going to act as if we didn't know each other. Of course, we work together. So today is a propaganda podcast to talk about how awesome the Sky Protocol project is. Uh, first of all, can you please describe to us, as if I were a total moron, what Sky Protocol is? The, the Sky Protocol is a data availability network targeted right now at Cardano specifically, but in the future for any blockchain. And... Cardano is the first blockchain we worked with actually uh, at uh, Boot five years ago, and now we are, we're going back to our roots, and uh, well, we're very excited to bring our long-standing projects uh, for data availability network to fruition. Actually, it's not just a, a project for data availability network; it's it's a very source of our name. Our name is Mutual Knowledge Systems, and what is Mutual Knowledge? Uh, back when I invented this technology, there were, there were no uh, names as uh, widespread as now data availability network. I, I call it mutual knowledge. Uh, um, it's a word from... Game theory? Epist epistemic logic, actually. Oh. In epistemic logic, it's a logic of who knows what. And in epistemic logic, there is a modality called uh, common knowledge. And another are called shared knowledge or mutual knowledge. In mutual knowledge, uh, it's, it's knowledge that everyone knows. If everyone in the room knows something, everyone in the room uh, knows and prefers uh, Spanish or something like that. So this is uh, called mutual knowledge. And if everyone in the room uh, realizes that everyone in the room realizes that everyone in the room knows Spanish and thinks it's the best language to speak, suddenly, they can translate to speaking Spanish uh, instead of English or whatever, or French. Or, so it's uh, the difference between knowing something and knowing that everyone else knows that everyone else knows that everyone else knows it's a translate thing. And in a way, a blockchain consensus creates a variant of common knowledge. It's a consensus. It's an agreement. It's a, everyone knows that everyone knows. This is, a, this is the thing, and everyone agrees that everyone sees it. And this is called common knowledge. And what we do with data availability networks is mutual knowledge. It's what everyone knows. Uh, there may or may not be a consensus, or maybe the consensus is in the future, but right now already everyone knows the things. And of course, it's cheaper to have everyone know something than to have everyone know that everyone knows that everyone knows that everyone knows something. So uh, you can do interesting things with mutual knowledge that you cannot do with common knowledge, or you can speed up things thanks to mutual knowledge in ways that you cannot uh, with just common knowledge. You still need the common knowledge, the common knowledge, uh, the consensus you need it to, to settle disputes, to ensure that there's no double spend, to ensure that uh, everyone agrees on, on the account. So you, you need the common knowledge, but you don't need it for everyday operations or you don't need it for um, for the common case where there is no fraud, for instance. Okay, Only so allow me to then uh, uh, ask you to simplify the, the, the um, uh, definition of Sky Protocol. So in yeah. this def broad definition of mutual knowledge, what is Sky Protocol? So it's a data availability engine. So what does it do for the Cardano users? It create this uh, mutual knowledge. It's the fact that the data is public and everyone knows, everyone knows it. And therefore, you can trust that the thing will happen or you can trust uh, that uh, you can see that there is, for you can see that there is no conflict even before you can have proven in court that there is no conflict, and therefore you can transact. You can do things faster. You can you can issue lots of transactions uh, for for layer two side chain. Basically, you can you, we can speed up layer twos, and you can speed up not just one layer two, but all the layer twos on Cardano and all the layer twos on any blockchain. You will be able to speed up. Uh, and create the layer twos to, to begin with, thanks to this uh, data availability network that ensures that 
the data is here for all to see and therefore that there is no um, no fraud, no no bad behavior, and you can you can publish lots and lots of data much cheaper than you could if you had to reach common knowledge. All right, and so um, that means that every DAP, every decentralized application, or every every smart contract working on a layer two of Cardano could benefit from Sky Protocol itself, right? Yes. So more precisely, anyone could write or rewrite their DAP or adapt their DAP, so now instead of running directly on Cardano, it can run uh, on Cardano with this uh, Sky protocol as an intermediary or as a, as, a speed, as a facilitating step, as a scalability engine, as a, an engine that makes you faster, more, reli more reliable, and or more censorship resistant. We also have, um, we'll have modalities in Sky protocol to help you be more uh, central separation or more private at the expense of latency. That is, there, there are always trade-offs in on the, on the on the blockchain, and Sky Protocol will allow you to, to choose a trade-off that works for your application. So, so oh, you, you want plenty of data and it, you don't care about censorship or whatever, you can publish it very fast. It will be available for the blockchain in big volumes and uh, no problem and you don't care too much about validation for instance or you care about validation or you care about censorship and you you, you will use as different topics so when you use this will you when you will use the scale protocol you will agree on a, a topic where you publish data and the topic will be sized uh, for your use it will be encrypted for your use and then your you you you'll, you'll pick the right um, the right compromise or the right trade-off for your application, and then you will pay the minimum price that corresponds just to this trade-off instead of trying to, to build everything for everyone and everyone has to pay the maximum price for everything, which would be, if you go directly on layer one, you, you'll pay the high price, of the high fees for all the transactions all the time. But if you have an application that doesn't have the same constraint, you can be much cheaper and much have much higher volume, much better latency, much better um, censorship resistance or whatever, depending on your application. And you choose the trade-off for your application and you, you are still compatible with the blockchain. You can still trade uh, blockchain uh, secured assets, assets that are made secure by Cardano or by whichever other blockchain later we support. Um, so you, you will be able to have an, an application that is more efficient and tailored to your needs and uh, overall blockchain system that's tailored to your needs and not have to pay the, the maximum price all the time. So the concrete consequence here with Sky Protocol is to reduce transaction fees drastically, for, first of all? To, yes, that's the one thing. Reduce drastically transaction fees and, and increase uh, scalability. By how much? Uh, as much as you're ready to sacrifice for the... Uh, Dep depending, but it would be very considerable to have a price decrease by 10x or 100x uh, if you have a lot, lots of volume, for instance, or if you... So we could at least divide that by 10 if we, if we succeed in our goal, right? Yes, or oh, 10 easily, yes. So the, the goal, uh, is, target is more like 100 than 10, but yes, 10x is, uh, is a good target also. Uh, so dear listeners, you... You might think, okay, so I have to disclose a conflict of interest. Of course, I, as an interviewer, I am I am my invitee's business partner. So there could be a conflict of interest when I tell you, oh, this guy is actually always very caref careful in his assertions. But please look him up. Look at all his conferences when he's doing his talks about security through clarity and other talks and look at his blog. And you will see that most of the time he's super careful. So when he's saying, yeah, conservative estimate 10 times, that's usually... That's usually a conservative estimate, so that's quite pleasant to hear. The, the thing is that, uh, for instance, U.S. versus European styles are different. So if a U.S. guy tells you, yeah, 10x uh, or whatever, she may not mean it, but if a European guy says it, he usually means it. Uh, well, then the question can he deliver on what he means, but uh, the, 
Yeah, there are, there are cultural differences. You should hear something different if, uh, if a French dude says something versus American dude says something. Yeah, yeah the same thing with management. In America, many people say, oh, it's awesome, whereas in many countries, they say they only say it, that it's awesome only when it's amazing, really. Yes, uh, oh, it's not bad, or, oh, it's trash, but actually it's just like... <laughs> in Netherlands or, Ger or Germany, they do say that, so, yeah. When, yes. So when we at Moon say that uh, Sky Protocol can reduce transaction fees by at least 10, it's at least 10 and it could be much more, dear friends. Okay, so uh, is there an another consequence for the, the DAP developers who, who would use Sky Protocol on top of their app? So yes, I know it depends what consequences. If you want consequences, there can be. There can be, for instance, oh, you want something, a uh, virtual machine that's closer to Ethereum or whatever, or something that's tailored to, to your app, you could use a uh, whatever contract you want with Sky Protocol. The advantage of Sky Protocol, it's, it's agnostic to your means of validation. So whether you want to use optimistic, optimistic validation or validation through uh, zero knowledge proofs, both are possible with, uh, will be possible with Sky Protocol with different um, trade-offs. Uh, we want also to implement something where the Sky Protocol does a validation for you which means more trust put onto the Sky Protocol, but sometimes that's what you want. So then we become a regular bridge slash uh, committee, but programmable. And we we want all this continuum of where do you want the, where where do you want to validate what, and we want to be compatible with that. So you want to be uh, completely validated with zero knowledge proofs and use something compatible with uh, Cardano, you will be able to do that. If you will want to have something that optimistically verified and have uh, something more like Ethereum virtual machine, you will be able to do that. And if you want to have uh, a Bitcoin-like blockchain completely validated uh, by uh, Sky Protocol without validation on the blockchain side, you will also be able to do that. It will all be possible. And so you also told me that there is a possibility to use the total locked value um, of the whole layer one. So basically, to simplify it, uh, to oversimplify it, all the money that is on the main blockchain to secure yeah. the side chains. Can you explain that safety problem uh, to our so, listeners? Yes. Uh, today, with today, there so are many people who to have generally similar ideas. So have a validation validation network and then have many many applications with it i think that the most well known is cosmos and in the cosmos ecosystem you have a one main network which is a cosmos network which it, it's used its atom or whatever the name of the of the token and the problem is that this this token only validates the main network and not the sub networks which means that if you if you uh, have an application, even though Cosmos is, say, worth $4 billion overall, but your application is only protected by a subcommittee of worth like $1 million worth of, of Cosmos tokens. Actually, your security is not $4 billion worth of security, it's only $1 million worth of security, which means that it's much easier to hack you and you're, you cannot have more than a $1 million in assets in your application and it's it's not very capital uh, efficient. That is, you, you you don't basically building on Cosmos versus building your new network is not that much more interesting because you still need basically to build your own network. Just now you're inside Cosmos, so maybe they facilitate the liquidity a little bit, but on the other hand, they also restrict the, the amount of liquidity available. So and you, you gain here, you gain you lose there. It's not a big advantage to use. Cosmos for your validation because the capital actually available to validate your application is small. And my my ID my with the Sky Protocol is that the total amount of capital that protects your application is essentially the same as the total amount of of, of the of the chain. So if if Sky Protocol is protected by one billion dollar in the future you'll have a $1 billion worth of security for your network and not just 
uh, when just the amount of the side chain and so on. Yes. Okay, so this is basically a great means also to ensure safety at a cheap price. And so uh, some people um, ask this. It's been only two days we've launched uh, the Twitter, but we already have many people asking questions. And some of them basically said, okay, uh, what's the difference with Midgard, for example? Uh, Midgard. I, 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 so Midgard is a project on Cardano that has a layer two blockchain that implement basically a Cardano and Cardano. And it's a very interesting project. And basically, Skype protocol could be uh, a way for Midgard to publish their data or to share the, their network. It, it, I, I would love to work with them. It's uh, the two are the, could, the two could work together. So I, I would see Midgard would be a project that we focus on implementing the, the protocol and the, the smart contract, etc. And we would be then focusing on publishing the data, doing the, the network layer, doing the uh, making sure the data is available for everyone. And so the, I see the two as complementary. And uh, as I said, right now, if Bitguard goes by themselves, they will be only protected by, say, $10 million of what, however much money they raise uh, to protect their network. Whereas if they join force with us and we manage to raise like uh, hundred billion dollars for ten different applications. Now each application is protected by a hundred billion dollars instead of each application being protected only by ten million dollars. So, wow, that's wonderful. So, Midgard guys, uh, you know, if you are listening to us, we we'd love to work with Midgard. Oh, okay, uh, and. Um, how different is it from uh, another technology that is called state channels? Ah, uh, it's quite different. So both are uh, technologies for layer two. So Skype protocol is a technology to facilitate side chains and state channels are different layer two. The difference is that um, side chains are better for open applications, applications that anyone can join and leave at any time. And state channels are better for what we clo call closed uh, applications, an application that has a, a small finite number of people participating at any time. And sure, maybe you can add or remove members, but at, at any point in time, this interaction has finite number of people. So if you have a specific uh, instance of, say, a futures contract, and you're looking for new partners, then you want a side chain. You want a place where, here, I have a uh, a contract, I'm looking for someone to join, and you put it on the side chain and you find someone else to join. But if you have already your specific instance, no, I have these two people doing this uh, this futures contract. Now, it's, I, I bought and you, you, you sold or whatever. Now, this is better done on a state channel where the, the contract is between close people. And now we don't have to exchange messages on, on the side chain or anything. We can just do it between ourselves. All right. So I, I think the two, co the, the two, con the, two technologies are complementary. Ideally, you want something like a um, side chain for any open interaction. And it, as soon as the people find each other, meet each other on the side chain, and now they open the state channel and they finish that there, and no one needs to know more about it. So that's Okay, so uh, state channels is basically a great application for uh, private payments uh, with a fini finite uh, amount, finite n amount of people that you know, so that you yeah. can have a private channel. And what we're doing here, Sky Protocol, is the opposite. When you have to do, for example, DeFi on Cardano, things like that. Yes. Yeah, so if you want to have a once again a DeFi contract that that where you publish publish and sell and buy futures or have a Dex or something, the people where the place where people meet each other, so the Dex itself, you want a side chain for that. And once the people have met, to conclude, to do the settlement, to do everything, you want a, um, a, a state channel for that. Dear so listeners, this is now probably a good explanation for you guys uh, about why we have a stretch goal, which is to build a, D, um, a small DEX in order to show the capabilities of Skype Protocol. So if we get overfunded and, uh, and if the token sale is very successful, there will be, um, there will be a DEX as well uh, that's in our roadmap. And speaking of the roadmap, Farik, can you please brief us a bit about uh, what the next steps are for Skype Protocol so that the listeners know what they're up to if they buy the token? Okay, so Sky Protocol at its heart is this network to publish data. It's comparable to things like Celestia or Eigenlayer, and there are many other people in this um, 
in this uh, market right now, although I think none is targeting Cardano at this time, but it's, it's a well-known uh, kind of idea. I think the idea is five or six years old, at least, uh, back when people were thinking, how do we um, extend Ethereum and other network layer two in a safe way? And they say, okay, we can do all these validations with contracts, but then we realize, oh, to have the contract with the validation, the data must be known. Otherwise, whoever manages the data can hold other people hostage. It's basically, if the the coordinator or the the person who publishes the data on the network can withhold the data. It's called data withholding attacks. At which point, the data is not available for other people. They can't get their money out of the side chain, and it's bad. So to prevent this kind of thing from happening, you need to have data availability. The first thing we want is publish the data uh, in a simple way and have a, a network of validators, make it more uh, decentralized as we go, make it ha have more options of validation as we go, have more options of privacy as we go. Uh, I mentioned that an important thing is topics. We want to be able to say, hey, all my data will be published on this topic and this topic has to be capped by mm. uh, by volume. Say this this is a data for one megabyte per second max, and this is a topic that was one gigabyte per second max, and etc. And once you have um, once you have selected your topic, now people who want to validate your side chain they only need to listen to this topic, not all the side chain. That's how we can scale uh, as much as the internet, basically, because at any point in time, you only have to listen to a small shard of the topics that is limited in size. So you, your machine, even though your machine is not the fastest in the world, you can still validate your part of the, of the network. That's fascinating. Um, and so also some people have asked on social media what um, the relationship uh, with our two products that were released on Cardano um, is. So Sky Protocol will be released on Cardano. Uh, and um, we have produced Avum, uh, which is a technology that works on Nervos. And we also made the fe feasibility study on Cardano. And Charles Hoskinson himself, in one of his weekly videos, praised the Avum project as well. So that's this one. And we have also the Glow project, where, and we have been funded through... Catalyst Grants and through a, um, a sponsorship by IOHK. So uh, how do these two projects interact with Sky Protocol if they do? I think these are, these are also complementary projects. So Sky Protocol is a, is a project that focuses on the data availability itself. But once you have the data available and you have your main blockchain, you, you want to validate the data from one to the other. And then you need a programming language to, to do that and to specify the shape of your data, etc. And that's why you want a programming language such as Glow, for instance, that will allow you to specify the shape of your data and generate a contract for Cardano and generate a contract for Ethereum, etc. So now you can have your the same chain that is validated both on Cardano and on Ethereum, which allows the same side chain to have on it both Cardano uh, assets and Ethereum assets. So you you can you can build you will be able to build applications that bridge that bridge multiple blockchains because you use uh, the same language in the same data availability network. So hopefully we want to make it easier for people to write an application that is essentially blockchain independent, mm -hmm. and for that you will use a blockchain independent language such as Glow that we developed before uh, to to write your application in a way that, oh, now I can deploy on Cardano, I can deploy on Ethereum, I can deploy on Solana and whatever, and you will be able to write a, um, an application that deploys on everything and that de deploys on Mina because we can also produce a zero knowledge proof or, or things like that. So you will be able to, to deploy on all the blockchains you want from one specification. The two are, 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 are separate. You could have a glow without without Sky Protocol or Sky Protocol without Glow, but I think there is a potential synergy between the two. And similarly, Avum is a technology to have blockchains that have both a UTXO and accounts at the same time. The advantages of both, the best of both worlds of UTXO and accounts. That is, 
the past is as solid as UTXOs, and the future is as flexible as accounts. And as the Avum technology allows us to do that, and we would like to have that also in conjunction with Scape, Scape protocol, where the Scape protocol would provide the data. And does this data represent UTXOs? Does it represent accounts? Does it represent just uh, raw data that is uninterpreted? Un it can be any of that. And thanks to Avum technology, it can have the advantages of both UTXOs and accounts. And so we expect that in the future, that's how people build blockchain or sidechain or whatever, they will have the advantages of uh, UTXOs, there are plenty of advantages that UTXOs have, there are also a few disadvantages, but the disadvantages are more in the um, how flexible it is to write applications that deal with future transactions and queuing transactions. It's very hard to queue transactions with UTXOs. Yeah, because well, it's so massively parallel that you can, you have specific hacks on these types of blockchains that, and we protect people from that with our technology. Yes, so Avum gives you the ease of uh, verifying the blockchain in parallel because it's UTXO in, on the on chain. It gives you the ease of queuing new transactions also in parallel concurrently because it has this um, uh, account view on, on the data. So we, we Fascinating. Uh, so, dear listeners, this is also answering a few of the questions that I saw on social media on Twitter. Um, sorry, Twitter. I'm getting old on X uh, yesterday. So basically, uh, some people asked, what's the interest of Glow? Well, Glow is uh, a very specific, a domain specific language. So that's why compared to Plutus and other languages, it does so many things. Uh, so um, they do so much more, but because they do much more, they are not as specialized as, as Glow, and this is why Glow has an interest here. But guys, some of you asked if uh, Sky Protocol would be compatible with Icon, so the um, the very well-spread uh, smart contract language on uh, on Cardano these days. Well, yes, it will be compatible with Icon, and we make it an imperative to not tie our users to a proprietary technology that would be the exact opposite of what uh, of our product philosophy. Yes, my the way I conceive things is I conceive things as as mod modules that are largely independent that have some synergy, but we want to be able to use yes Sky Protocol with Icon and with with Solidity and with Plutus and with all, all the languages you will want to use. And Glow will be usable with Sky Protocol or with something else, etc. And our state channel will also be able to work on whichever networks. The idea is we want modular components and help people use the best tools at the best point. And if we find that, for instance, there's not interesting glue, that's okay, because we have this module Skype protocol that will work with everything else and, uh, and conversely. So we, we really believe in competition, compatibility, co-petition more than just competition. Like it's uh, the best wins, but the best make everyone win together. Like it's not just the best win and the other die. No, the, the best win and everyone benefits because this is a solution that um, you talked about solidity, and uh, this is also a good way for me to ask you a question. So that means that in the future, not for this token sale, but maybe for a second um, token offering, so that we're not offering the whole pool now, and in, in a few months when we're done with um, the first goals, that means we can uh, make a second token offering, and we can port Sky Protocol to other blockchains as well, such as Ethereum. Yes, the, the goal is always to port Scare Protocol to all the blockchains. And should we have a second blockchain offering or token offering or or have more like... I think that eventually you want to have only one token for everything. So uh, it does not necessarily make sense to issue to me different kind of tokens, but it may, might make sense to, to issue... I, now, now this token will be more useful because now it will be useful not just for Ethereum, uh, for Cardano, but also for Ethereum, etc. So every, every time we uh, support a new network, the value of the token will rise, but it's also a good opportunity to increase the capitalization because if you want to be able to um, secure a larger amount of of data or applications, you, you will want to, to also raise uh, the, the value of the network uh, 
to raise more capital because the ca in the end, the capital helps secure the network. It's uh, the fact that there's any proof of stake, the, the validators put their capital down and are uh, responsible for getting things or the value of their tokens go down. That's what protects the network. The fact that there is people who have put money down and have a vested interest in the network continuing to operate. That's why the, the validator won't cheat or won't double spend or won't help you. Hey, I can still, I'm a validator. I could help this guy steal $1 million from whatever. Yes, but uh, the value of your token will drop by more than a million dollars. So don't do it. Um, so you're facing the, the whole, you're, if you want to cheat, you have to fight the whole concept of economics. So yes, so that's why, that's why in the end there, there can be only one network or like it's just like a Highlander. Uh, I strongly believe that. Uh, okay, Highlander is a bit extreme uh, view, but yes, there there will be one main network, and the second network will be somewhat far behind, and the third even far behind, etc. There will be a very decreasing winner takes all effect. Yeah, strong winner takes all, but but still, there's a small chance that the winner will will fail and that's what gives the value to the second best. The value of the second best is just insurance in case the, the best one fails. So why is Ethereum so far behind Bitcoin or something? Okay, because yeah, uh, Bitcoin is still the, the main contender. Actually, the US dollar is still the main contender and Bitcoin is far behind. And every time the US dollar falls, well, Bitcoin says, hey, actually the, the value of Bitcoin increases not because Bitcoin has gotten better, but because the odds that it becomes the best are, are, are bigger. And similarly, in case Bitcoin fell, well, there's Ethereum, in case Ethereum fell, well, there's Solana or whatever, or Cardano or whoever is next on, on the list. Like, uh, so the goal now is basically to have networks that are, or technologies that are the most, in, as interoperable as possible and as uh, yes. chain as agnostic as possible. And we, that's why we, yes. we decided to do that, right? Yes, my main goal has always been to help interoperate between the blockchains. When I enter the blockchain world, I say, everyone reinvents everything from scratch and doesn't interoperate and it sucks. And uh, like you, you innovate, then you receive a big pile of money from, um, from a token race and then you stop cooperating and then there's no more innovation because uh, once, once you've raised a token, you're not interested in, you have an established uh, thing and you don't want to innovate like that. The, the, the incentives are terrible in the blockchain industry right now. And my bet is that by building a play that is centered around interoperability and the value of the network is in the interoperability, uh, we can hopefully uh, reverse or find an incentive that uh, counters the incentive toward not interoperability because the whole point of uh, Sky protocol of Glow, etc., is to make things interoperable, low, lower the barrier to adoption, lower the barrier to cooperation, lower the barrier to having people work together. I, I want the innovation, I want easier innovation in one blockchain. I want us to adopt it very fast, or maybe not for the whole network, but oh, it becomes available to the network and then can go within the network without having to to kill the thing to kill and start again i want innovation to be possible without to have uh to to kill the blockchain and start a new blockchain yes wonderful yeah. i like the idea to be the switzerland of blockchain and not to uh, to kill every competitor and instead uh, thrive together thank you so much Faré. okay any last word in 20 seconds sure to me the same as evolution uh, Learning while you're alive versus evolution by dying and having a new, a new generation of people appearing. I want blockchain to be able to learn and uh, learn better and faster. Thank you so much, everyone. This was Mutual Knowledge Podcast, a special episode because here we're, I'm not interviewing somebody else. I'm interviewing a person from the company and so advertising a project that we are building. But, you know, sometimes it feels good. And... Look it up, skyprotocol.org. We are currently preparing that token sale and building a great data availability engine and scaling solution for Cardano and possibly many other blockchains in the future. Stay tuned, everyone. Bye, Fari.
Bye. Thank you for having me.